microphone already and had to buy another tripod today. Wow. Yeah, man. Hey, man, this town is getting scarce. It's getting scarce. Why you say that? Trying to find a tripod, trying to find a camera. <laughs> hey, I don't know what what all y'all doing. It's hard. It used to be you could just walk video stuff. You could just walk in Best Buy, easy. Yeah. Now you you know you gotta gotta purchase online before you get there. Hey man, you, you look better, at the stock list. You better go out and get your tripods and and uh, microphones and mm-hmm, mm-hmm. sound equipment. You better yeah. get it all. Rob Hayes is in the building. Yeah, Rob Hayes in the building. Another episode of the Inconsistent Podcast. On you hoe ass. (laughs) On you bitch ass, hoe ass. On you bitch, bitch, hoe ass, bitch ass niggas. On you... On you hoe ass ni- <laughs> on you bitch ass hoe ass, bitch ass niggas. We on the Rob Hayes inconsistent podcast, and I blast yo, and I blast your ass. And if you, we shooting up the studio, you better get your <laughs> tripod hoe, cause we ain't fucking with y'all hoe ass niggas no more. You got a problem with Rob Hayes, you ain't having no more. And we <laughs> all up in these gully streets, we bust you in your sheet. You look at me, nigga, and I spread them cheeks. If you a girl, and I'm married though, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> try to clean it up. <laughs> we got Justin Hires in the building. Wow, you're the first person to freestyle. Uh, We've never had anybody freestyle before. Really? Yeah. Sometimes I'm in that rapping mood. You know I rap though on the low. I don't put out three mixtapes. Justin, can I ask you a question? Go for it. On the set of MacGyver. Did anyone ever discuss Juvenile's issue with MacGyver? No, what was his issue? What? He called him a bitch, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, why did he do that? Why did he do that? I'm very disrespectful. Yeah. Was that ever discussed? Were y'all ever like, hey, man, I love 400 Degrees. I'm just really curious. What did y'all do to Juvenile? No, but that's very unfortunate that Juvenile (laughs) feels that way about MacGyver. I mean, MacGyver has done nothing but provided hours and hours of quality content. Why did he say that? Hey man, now nah, I feel some type of way. You know? In two thousand, he talking about eighties MacGyver. It wasn't even on the air at yeah, this point. No, no, it, it's been gone, been gone. Hey. I don't know if MacGyver went to the French Quarter and was rude to a young juvenile. <laughs> I don't know what happened, but that's how I found out about MacGyver. That's how you found. That's out about- my <laughs> intro to MacGyver. Is that my favorite rappers don't like him. Damn. <laughs> Juvenile, what's up, bro? I, I, I have to feel like maybe there was some form of uh, um, gentrification that might have happened. Okay, that, okay. That maybe Richard Dean Anderson himself was involved with. Okay, okay, okay. M- maybe he bought some property and flipped yeah. it yeah, yeah. in the Noya. Yeah. And uh, he wasn't having it. Maybe Juvenile was just trying to make his friends laugh. Maybe. Like if, if I call MacGyver a bitch, everyone's going to crack up. I'm going to tell you what I didn't understand about uh, Juvenile, the high, sure. the high song when it first came out. You didn't understand I, high? I, I did get it, bro. It's very simple. It's just a, it's a lot of questions. Some, it's a guy some, with a lot of questions. Some would say a little too simple. And it was so I, simple. I, I'm not, I'm not going to say that. I'm, I'm thinking the opposite. Go for it. Now, I'm going to tell you, as I got older, that's my, that's my shit now. Yeah. But when it first dropped, it, I, I could, because I was on Outkast. So if, okay. it, if, if something wasn't on Outcast level, if you wasn't yeah. on Outcast, Goody Mob level, yeah. I wasn't fucking with it. Where were you? Florida. You were in Florida. St. Petersburg, Florida. So so when you turn off your Outcast and walk outside and then the cars in the streets are playing this. I didn't get it. You didn't get it? Y'all realize he's talking on the beat, right? He's not talking to me, though. Off top, I don't got a Benz. <laughs> Off top, hey, I could just enjoy the song because very early in the song, I'm like, all right, this don't apply to me. 
I don't have to go to court. Me either. I'm not a juvenile. I'm a good kid at this time. Yeah. 1998. You're a good kid. Solid ten year old. Safety patrol. Definitely. I'm. I'm putting people in court. Hey man, let me ask you about safety. <laughs> my, my daughter just said she want to be a safety patrol. Yeah. There's a part of me that feel like there's an inherent snitchness. Okay. With, with them being a patrol. Okay. Officer at it's school. But either, you tell me about either it. Either you are a snitch. Or you can't wait to be corrupt. Mm. <laughs> it's like you have you you have one or the other. Either you're gonna be an informant or you are gonna be a dirty cop. My daughter's a dirty <laughs> she's a dirty cop. I know her character. <laughs> Someone on the inside who now can vouch for the troublemakers and, and get them that one last pass. My daughter's mischievous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Damn, there you go. <laughs> I got a little junior mafia. <laughs> it just might be a snitch, you know. Might be, might be but like she's not, hey, a, she's not a snitch. Hey, where's your hall pass? You know, might be that, but it might also be like I got some authority. You better have your hall pass unless you one of the homies. She's on that tip, bro. <laughs> Let me tell you how I know my daughter not a snitch. My wife asked her to tell her like one of her friends did something and some. What I don't know, but one of her friends did something. I don't remember. Mm-hmm. And my wife was like, "Tell me, tell me who it was. Tell me." She was acting like she was really in court. Tell yeah. me, tell me who it was. And my daughter was just like, she just went quiet. She was like, "I'm, I'm not. No." Wow. She was like, "That's my friend. I'm not telling." Wow. Like she held it down, bro. Yeah. Like we took her toys, tablet, TV. I call it the three T's. Yeah. Toys, TV, tablet. We took all three of them shits away. She did not snitch. Now, as a father, yeah, I was proud. Yeah. I was like, my daughter ain't no snitch. But yeah. my wife, she was she was all up in arms about it. But I was on some like, I respect it. She didn't snitch on a friend. Mm-hmm. Because it wasn't nothing crazy. It wasn't like they was fucking selling dope out of yeah. the elementary school. I mean, it was some, it was some bullshit. One time, uh, there was a hole in the house. No one knew where the hole came from. It was in the wall. Okay. Your house. Like, like a plaster wall. Yeah, yeah. When I was a kid. Nor me or my sister took up for it, said who did it, just a hole. To this day? To this day. But one of y'all did it. One of us did it. <laughs> one of us definitely did it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what's up. I mean, but that's what it is, man. I definitely snitched on my brother. I ain't shit. Yeah. My brother, speaking of holes, here goes my whole story. Okay. I'm going to tell you the whole story. Okay. Pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> my, <Thanks. laughs> my brother dug a hole in his closet, in his bedroom. Okay. To go underneath the house so he could sneak out of the house. So he literally okay. took a shovel. He didn't my, know about raccoons. He yeah, didn't know about rats. possums. Yeah. Rats. Yeah. Yeah, he didn't care. Thug yeah. life. He was on that Tupac shit. That's what he was listening to. Okay. And he literally took a shovel or whatever. I don't know what he used. A saw. I don't know what he used. Did he watch Shawshank? He did. Okay. He okay. Did his favorite movie. And he was going to Shawshank his way <laughs> out into these streets. That's crazy. Yeah, he had a picture of Morgan Freeman <laughs> <laughs> and Tim Robbins. The hole in the closet is wild because you can get away with that for a while. Oh, he did. And I only found out. So this is what happened was he, he told me about it one day. Somehow I found out about it. He told me about it. Like, yeah, I did the hole so I could get out. But he had ran away from home. And I was like concerned, like I was scared for him. Yeah, because he was he had ran away from home. So I, my like parents, a real runaway, like like pack clothes. Yeah, had the, a plan. He had to stick with the little bag. You know, they had yeah. a stick with a t shirt. Sure, and your shit was wrapped in that t shirt. Uh huh. Uh huh. Snoopy style. It, Snoopy style. Yeah. Tom Sawyer. Okay. Huckleberry Finn and Engine Joe style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did that. And so <laughs> he ran away. Uh-huh. And so I was so concerned. My parents was distraught. And I was like, huh, well, he, there is this hole in the closet. My parents said, hole in the closet. Dang. I said, yeah. Okay. I said, he had, a, he had a hole in the closet. Maybe he escaped that away. You know? And they found the hole. I told on him. He yeah. already outside. Why'd you have to tell him how he got there? <laughs> He already gone. Whether he went out the front door, the back door, he left in the the night. The, the, the roof, you know. <laughs> I think he left the I chimney. He left. However, he got out. He got out. You wanted to tell. 
I'm, no, I'm gonna tell you what it you was. You wanted them to know, maybe that there was something that they didn't know that you knew he that beat your me. brother did. He beat me, <laughs> Rob. Okay, <laughs> he beat me when I was a kid. I think what it was at the time. I think we had an alarm on yeah. our house, and okay. I think they didn't hear. Like you know how the alarms have a chime that go on, and like when you go in and out. Got you. And I think they pro- so I think that's what it was. Like they was like, how did he get out of the house and we didn't hear the oh, chime noise? Okay, because that means somebody could get in right. and we don't hear. Exactly. And we paying for the chimes. Chimes ain't free. A- ADT. Yeah. Doors just don't chime on their own. You gotta pay somebody to, to bring the sensors. <laughs> exactly. You know what I'm saying? They're like, we done paid for all these sensors and y'all digging another way out. Yep. We need a sensor in the closet. Yeah. We need a closet chime. Yeah, man. He was on uh he 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 made his own underground railroad. That's crazy. He escaped the freedom and the nigga That's came back. That's crazy. Yeah. Did he did he come back through the front door or he came back through the hole and then y'all was waiting on him in his room? He came back through the hole and we had <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I hear some shuffling, I think. <laughs> hey, y'all hear that? Hey, hey, my brother back. <laughs> you see his head poking up like, oh uh, mama, daddy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fun times. <laughs> Shout out to my brother. What do you wear but when you like about to like scurry out of that under from under a house? Like like what you what you put on to do that? It better be something you don't mind getting dirty. Yeah. I would I would hope. Yeah. I, I hope you got on some gym clothes. You got or, on a rain slicker. What you got on where you just like Yeah. Your, your play clothes. Remember play clothes? Play clothes. Yeah, the good old days, man. <laughs> Good old days. That's what I hope he had on. Mm-hmm. Some dirty ass sweats or something. And then the good clothes, it was in that um that Snoopy okay. travel suitcase he had. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I never had a plan. I would just leave and then walk around the block and then be like, What what happened? I ain't oh, I ain't have no plan. I gotta just walk back. <laughs> so you All were right. you were so you tried to run away from home. Never even made it to the nighttime. You know what I'm saying? I was like, well, <laughs> I ain't I ain't really think this through. I just got mad and, and ran off. If these lights yeah. come on before if I if I don't get home before these lights come on, mm-hmm. that's my ass. I was probably trying to get kidnapped. Cause like who, who ki- what kid just leaves with no direction, no no plan, no idea, no clothes, just just storms out. You know what my brother told me? I was I was afraid of getting kidnapped one time. And my brother's like Nigga, nobody wants you. They go give you back. He was like, Damn. Any, yeah. He was like, any kidnapper is giving you back, bro. And that made that, that was actually comforting. I was like, oh, okay, cool. Fuck, fuck that nigga. How dare he say that shit? How dare he? He's dead now. But you know, R.I.P. R.I.P. Man, shout out to my brother, man, Javon. <laughs> I don't know what this is the first R.I.P. Shout out. Of the podcast. I didn't know. <laughs> Shout out to Javon Hyatt, man. <laughs> I thought you were going to do the same. <laughs> no, no. I was going to try to find, you know. Before, when it started, <laughs> it sounded appropriate. And then it kind of fizzled into yeah, some yeah. other, you know. Shout out to Javon D'Angelo Hyatt. Yeah. Deathbed. Yeah. Shout out to Javon, man. That's my man. dog, bro. But you, you, oh my bad, go for it. Oh, you, you good, Justin? Uh, what's your favorite color sky? My favorite color sky. Mm-hmm. Damn man, you know that's a good ass question, Ashley. That's what I like about when I seen your clips. Yeah, they're so <laughs> random, right? That it's, it's the brand of the podcast. I, I love it. You like that? And my homeboy, my homeboy Fur got a podcast, and his is the same ASAP way. Except Fur. Is it ASAP? No. Oh, okay. no, the rapper. No, 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 no. No, this is a comedian. Ferguson is a popular last name, but you know what I'm saying? I just had to That's guess true. maybe maybe ASAP Ferg was the Ferg that you were talking about. And if you're in the wrong Ferguson, you get your ass shot. <laughs> um. So, right? Ain't that where one of them shooters <laughs> happened? <laughs> Wasn't that in Ferguson? Yeah, no, that, that is true. That yeah. is true. I repeat, Mike Brown. Yeah, Mike Brown was in Ferguson. Mm-hmm, God damn mm-hmm. it. My bad, everybody. This, y'all like, this motherfucker just keep bringing up death. <laughs> Death and mayhem on this episode. Color. That's what I like about you, about your style, bro. Um, orange. Okay. Now, now that I think about it, like an orange. My, yeah, yeah, my favorite yeah. sunset. Yeah. Mm-hmm, like, mm-hmm. cause my favorite color is like baby blue, but there is something about that orange, like sunset color. Okay. That's like gives me peace. Okay. What about you? 
Uh, I like like a a sherbety, purpley, orangey. I like that too. In there, I like mm-hmm. that too. Mm-hmm. It looks so good, you want to eat it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, butt cheeks. What do you put? What do you put the uh baby blue on? <laughs> What do I put the baby blue on? Mm-hmm. I don't even wear it anymore. So I'm going to tell you how much I used to love baby blue. Me and my friends in high school had baby blue day. Baby blue day. <laughs> I kind of like it. I kind of like it. <laughs> and like all of us like a have... real fabulous baby bash. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Baby blue day, North Carolina kicks, hottest kid on the block, you know. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. yeah. I had an Iverson jersey for whatever reason. It was baby blue. Okay. Had some shoes. With football baby- jersey? Iverson football? Basketball. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Baby but blue. Baby blue. Reebok just says Iverson three on it. That's exactly correct. Yeah, yeah. That's exactly correct. Mm-hmm. You know. White tee underneath. It gray was a, tea. It was a white tee underneath. White tee. Okay. How'd you, okay. Know? How'd you know it was a white tee underneath? I'm just trying to put together the picture. You know what I'm saying? The sleeves, it's a very boxy uh, jersey. It's yeah. a very like rectangular style jersey. So you know, it's kind of natural to put a, a taller T underneath so that the you know your nostalgic memory is impeccable. Sometimes you remember a lot of specific things. Yeah, but that's impressive that you know because I I have a picture in mind mm-hmm. and that's exactly what it is. Okay, I, I have on the Iverson jersey. I got yeah, on yeah. the white tee underneath it. Yeah, yeah. I think I had on some blue jeans. I mean blue shorts. Blue jean shorts. Blue jean shorts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Florida, Florida. Contrast boy. stitching. What the stitching on the jeans? Is it kind of bold? Damn, was it? I don't know. I don't see. I don't even know. Jeans super dark. They 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 light. They, they kinda, fade they in. They kind of light. They kinda, light blue to, to white on the on the front. What the, I had some of them. Okay, <laughs> but no, I, I didn't have them yeah. on that day. But no. I did have some of them. Yeah, man. So, Your socks showing a little bit. Okay, just a little. Okay. I'm trying to think when I got into ankle socks. When I realized that having my socks showing wasn't the, wasn't the move no more. The first person with the footies. That was a conversation. And the, I feel like they knew they wanted to have that conversation. It would always be somebody like, hey, bro, you ain't got no socks on. And then they kind of show what they heel that they got on the footy socks. That's right. And then they really stun it on you when it's got a little swoosh on it. Like, dang, y'all, <laughs> you you stepping on a swoosh? That's crazy. Okay, you just hiding a swoosh. Man, Rob Kardashian had a whole sock line. Never <laughs> seen one. No what do they did. look like? It's called uh, went under biz- went out of business. Man, that's what it's called. What it looked like. I would wear socks like colorful socks and stuff, and then there would always be somebody like, that, "Are those Rob Kardashian socks?" I'd be like, "No, I don't even know what. I don't even know where to get those. I've only seen them on TV." I would assume Amazon, you know. Mm-hmm. But yeah, he had a whole sock collection. But I'm, but I'm like, I don't know. Here's my problem with fancy socks. It's like, how many people are gonna really see these socks? So I feel like I'm paying extra money yeah. for something that's really not going to be seen. And so sure. some people would say, well, it's for me. Yeah. But I don't have time to spend money for just for me for like that. I don't know. Somebody told me that like people who like fancy socks don't have a personality. Mm. And it's like the socks is like covering up for the fact that they don't have a personality. I don't know if I agree with that. I I'm a like colorful sock person. Like like unique socks, different socks. I just got regular socks oh, today. Okay. I was hoping he was going to surprise me. But. No, no, no. I almost did. I almost did. But then I was like, oh, we're not going to get into our socks right now. <laughs> I had just regular tube socks today. But, you know, sometimes tube socks are a statement. I just bought some. Yeah. Some tube socks. It was so cold in L.A. this year, bro. It was a cold, cold winter into a cold spring yeah bro yeah. so last time i was in town i went and bought some tube socks i bought some black ones and some white ones okay and i i tried to wear them to sleep the other night almost burnt my goddamn foot off it was hot as hell yeah i've always slept in socks from as long as I, after i got out of footy pajamas i started sleeping in socks now what age was that how old did you <laughs> did you stop the footy pajamas well, you transition, you know, you go, you're a footy and then you go one piece and then you're like, now I'm wearing two pieces. So <laughs> I feel like I started with the footies. I say like about two, three, I get into the two piece. And then uh, some of those old Halloween costumes that just become, 
you know, uh, that those are the pajamas now. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe eight. Eight years old. Sleeping, sleeping in socks. I've always slept in socks. I don't do nothing without socks. Mm-hmm. Nothing. Yeah. I bathe in socks. I don't bathe in socks. It's the only thing I don't do. I mean, I, I don't bathe in socks, but you might. You, I was about to ask you <laughs> about the the aqua socks or whatever. Did they have those? I I wanted some. I feel like I didn't have any like authentic like Nike aqua socks, but I think I had something that was aquatic for your feet for sure. I see. I didn't even know they made aqua socks. Yeah, like aquatic socks. Aqua socks was like a Nike product. And then, like, like the little uh, Walmart and other companies would make some and stuff. But it'd be like some, you know, like some scoop. Not not like fins, but like on some, you know, jet ski riding type stuff. Damn. Yeah, yeah. I like that shit. Yeah, yeah. You know what I hate? I hate when, when someone promote a product and then you can't find it. Oh, yeah. That's the worst. So, like, I remember Kevin Hart had some Nike shoes. Mm-hmm. You know, he was running with everybody. It was yeah, like yeah, running yeah. with Hart and all that shit. Yeah. I said, I'm going to start running, too. Yeah. And I went to Foot Locker or whatever to buy some buy his shoes. I said, let me yeah. support and get. I needed some running shoes. Mm-hmm. I wanted to buy his shoes. Yeah. They weren't in the store. No, nah, they sold out immediately. That's what it was. Yeah. They were some people bought them to resell. You could have got them oh. on the second hand when they came out. I didn't want to run that bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They ain't Jordans now. Yeah, you know. I'm sure they will be one, but I don't know if they even make them anymore. I don't think so. Damn, I don't think so. Yeah, they had a couple colors though. I had some LeBron shoes. I still to this day. I I did a commercial that never aired. I did a okay. commercial that never aired. It it was a campaign for Nike. It was mm-hmm. a LeBron shoe and a Kobe Bryant shoe. New shoes that was coming out. Okay. And I don't know if you know who Tim Tim and Eric are, but it's like this. Great job. Yeah. They, yeah. So they was directing it. Absolutely. And yeah. so I was doing this commercial, and the, the campaign was so large, I was thinking, why isn't Kevin Hart doing this? I'm literally saying my lines, and I'm thinking in the back of my head, like, because this is when Kevin was starting to kind of pop. Mm-hmm. And I was like, dude, why did they got me here? Like, I wasn't on shit at this time. Yeah. Maybe 21 Jump Street? Maybe. I don't even know. Okay. I don't even know if I did that by this time. Okay. And so I was like, Kevin Hart should be doing this campaign. So anyways, shoot the campaign. They gave me... um the free, they gave me like some free uh, basketball shorts, LeBron shorts, LeBron okay. t- t-shirt, LeBron shoes, LeBron, and then Kobe Bryant shoes. And I, I'm going to bring up death again. <laughs> I wanted to have Kobe sign the shoes, so I never yeah. wore them. Yeah, yeah. Because I was like, I'm going to get LeBron to sign this shoe, and I'm going to get Kobe to sign it. So I still got them shoes at my crib. Oh, wow. Never worn. Wow. Yeah, bro. Brand new. Brand new LeBrons, brand new Kobe's from like... 2014 or some shit 13 okay all right yeah bro dang i don't know why the fuck i brought that up shit never aired though i do know that it never aired yeah they played me yeah yeah. because i'm sure someone at nike watched it it was like why didn't we get kevin hart to do this yeah it was just too big of a campaign it didn't make sense i got you yeah were they there was lebron and kobe there no they were somewhere uh were the puppets there I wish. <laughs> <laughs> I wish the puppets were there. Yeah, that would have been crazy. Yeah, bro. Tim and Eric, man. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Tim and Eric. Shout out to Tim and Eric. I'm a I'm a distant memory they have forgotten. I'm sure they don't even remember that shit. If they both know you, then maybe, you know, they could put it together. And oh, like, yeah. Wait. He was the one that yeah. we couldn't afford Kevin Hart, so we got Justin. Or they're like, oh, we got the we got the Nikes too, we got the shoes too. They still did got the shoes. I still got them shoes, man. And yeah. they gave me the shoes because they were so happy. That's why I was surprised it didn't air because yeah. they were so happy with the how how the shoot went. Mm-hmm. I was like, that was great. Here, take take it, nigga. Take it. <laughs> take these shoes. Yeah. Take this jersey, the t yeah. shirt, the shorts. Get out of here and be somebody. Yeah. And then Nike said, no, dog. Mm. It'd be like that. That's how it be sometimes, man. But <laughs> You're doing all kind of stuff, you know? All right. Yeah. You did a bunch of stuff that did air. You know? <laughs> when I when I met you, you know, you you were on jerks with cameras. <laughs> I was impressed by that. I was like, hell yeah, this dude's on MTV. That's the goal, ain't it? They ain't that why we, you know, MTV jump tri- in the game? Uh, uh, to be uh, on to be at the VMAs, uh, be on MTV. Like I'm I'm looking at that like like that's it. Then 
you know, it's all kind. Of, it's on and popping from there. I tell you a funny story. It gets crazy. I get to L.A. Mm-hmm. I book before Jerks with Cameras. There's another show called Disaster Date. Right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like the white version of Hell Date. I remember Disaster Date. And so sure. it came on MTV. And the same company that did Disaster Date did Jersey Shore. Okay. We filmed it around the same time. Okay. And 495 Productions, the name of the production company. So and you was hanging with Snooki in the situation, that, Pauly D? That's what I'm about to get to. All right. They invited us to the premiere party mm-hmm. for Jersey Shore. Hadn't come out yet. Okay. All the Disaster Date cast members were like, Man, fuck that show. We ain't going to see that shit. Oh, dumbass Jersey Shore. That's just, fuck. We ain't going to see that. Fuck we talking about. We had no clue because we didn't. We just had no concept. We we, yeah. we we had never traveled to New Jersey. Yeah, we didn't know the lifestyle. Yeah. We just had no context or nothing to be. This is going to be one of the biggest reality shows ever on TV. So yeah. we, we was so I think all the cast was like, nah, we cool. And we none of I don't think any of us went. Maybe one. I don't know. I don't think any of us went to that premiere. Dang. And then Jersey Shore came out and then became Ooh, the biggest. Yeah. You know. And then I tell you a fun fact. This a lot, a lot of people don't know this shit. One of the cast members from Jersey Shore was the original host of Jersey with Cameras. Okay. I thought he actually did a good job. He didn't do a bad job. Okay. And then they was doing reshuffling at MTV or something. Mm-hmm. And they was like, we we want we don't want to have any like memory of like Jersey Shore like I don't know they didn't want to have like no Jersey Shore presence because people don't oh, know yeah so like okay. when they when they bring in new like execs and stuff like that at these studios they try to make their own mark and so it's like yeah <laughs> yeah yeah he, he got <laughs> fired is what yeah. happened he was actually who was the DJ. I, Polly D. Polly D. Mm-hmm, That's mm-hmm. who it was. Yeah. He did it. He actually did a good job. So they fired him and then they <laughs> then they hired Tone Bell. Wow. They brought in Tone Bell the whole. Shout out Tone Bell. <laughs> shout out to Tone Bell. Yeah, shout out to Tone Bell. So what part of Florida are you from? St. Petersburg. St. Petersburg. Right next to Tampa. Okay. Yeah, man. Are you a Buccaneers fan? I am, man. Okay. I am. Uh, but you know, I I, I, I gotta be. Yeah, you know, it's the hometown. You know, yeah. but you ever wear the the Sherbert colored jersey? Man, I don't own one. Yeah, but I would. Yeah, but I got I got my Bucks hat. You know, I've been okay. to. It's so funny. L- luckily, about to do a, a subtle flex. About to All do, right, about to do a subtle flex. Pre- be, get prepared for this. Flex okay, now. I was at the Super Bowl. Okay, okay, the, okay. The year they won the Super Bowl in Tampa. So when Tom Brady came. To Tampa. Yeah. He took us from not even, I don't even think the Bucks was in the playoffs the year before. And then he came to Tampa and took us to the Super Bowl. And we won. Wait, wait, wait. I thought that Super Bowl was only for, like, essential workers. Like, yeah. they were just supposed to be doctors and nurses right. and stuff there. What was you doing there? You wore some scrubs? Yeah. Well, that's it. That's actually... <laughs> That's amazing that you remember that, though. <laughs> That's amazing you remember that because that was during COVID and mm-hmm, everybody was masked mm-hmm, up. Mm-hmm. The Super Bowl was airing on CBS at the time. Got you. So Got and MacGyver you. was on CBS. Your work event. This is Sunday night. That America's most watched network. I got to be in the building. I'm sorry. Got to be there. I would love to come to your Super Bowl party. I, I wish I could, but I, duty calls. Duty call, and I coughed on every essential <laughs> worker. <laughs> I coughed on every one of them, mask off. So, yeah, so that's how I got it. And then the same thing, I was at the Super Bowl in Atlanta like two years prior or something because of okay. CBS. Shout okay. out to CBS. They, they look out for the, their talent, man. The Travis Scott. Uh, big boy Maroon Five Super Bowl. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah, yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. You remember the See, I wish boringest, I... low scoring, yeah. <laughs> no touchdownest Super Bowl Rams and the Patriots. Damn, that's amazing. You yeah, remember yeah. that? I only remember the the the, the winner. Okay. That's all, I, and sometimes I don't even remember that, bro. I just remember that the Warriors won the, the the championship last year. Really? Yeah, 
just completely forgot until I'm watching the playoffs and it was like, you know, last year champs. And I was like, oh, yeah, they did. They did win. I only remember the winner. That's a wild place to be. <laughs> That's a wild place to be. I only remember the winner. Yeah. I keep up with so many losers. Yeah. It's nuts. Why, though? Because I feel like they're probably really good, too. Mm-hmm. You know, I keep up with the Utah Jazz. I keep up with. Let me tell you how you know, this, the, this, this is going to hurt some feelings. This is going to hurt some feelings. The people that lose the Oscars, those movies, I watch all those movies. Well, yeah, movies I think is a little you different than sports. You know what I'm saying? Sports. Like, I'm, I'm just saying I'm keeping up with... with. But I don't know who else is in the category, te- technically. So even for, like, the Oscars, mm-hmm. like, usually I won't remember who else was up for the nominations. But they say history only remembers the victors anyways. No one remembers number two at, at the Olympics. You only remember who, who came in with the goal. It depends on what they did. You can you could be a memorable number two. Yeah. Tanya Harden, you could, you know. That's true. Yeah. Uh, you know, who somebody else? that roided <laughs> it up. <laughs> who else? Name another. Uh, <laughs> you know, Brian and them got the bronze one time. Who, who the dude that caught the football on his helmet? He, he, he didn't make. No, I remember it was a Super Bowl. He was one inch short. Was it the Titans? That was, yeah, the Titans and the Rams, Atlanta, 2000. But it was the Titans that lost, right? They was one the inch away. The Titans lost, yeah. That's the only number two I've ever remembered. Yeah. That was so epic that he was one inch away, one yard away or whatever. I was like, damn. I remember that one. But I hate to bring this up, but that, that was Steve McNair, and he's also passed away. Hey. Hey. <laughs> R.I.P. Man, yeah, you know what I'm saying. I, I, I'm noticing a theme here. I'm a dark nigga. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's going on, man? You, you all right? But see, that's what I'm saying. I didn't even remember that was Steve McNair. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, you see what I'm saying? Mm-hmm, I just remember mm-hmm. the moment. I didn't even put my memory. I'm gonna tell you how bad I am, bro. Allen Iverson is literally in my top, probably top three basketball players of all time. Okay. Okay. Literally. Had his poster on my wall. Okay, my, so you had the jersey and the poster. Look, exactly. You put on the jersey, popped your collar, and like looked at the poster. That's a fact. I love, <laughs> I love Allen Iverson. Mm-hmm. Love him. Mm-hmm. Didn't watch the documentary simply because he never won a championship. No, you gotta watch that. You gotta watch that. The Showtime. Yeah, no, I, I, and yeah. I got it. I got it saved. And oh I, no, you gotta watch that. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm you gotta you. watch that. It puts practice and. In perfect context. Oh. And there's been, like, little, like, mini docs and stuff about that since. But it, like, puts in the context, like, like what happened, what he was going through, and why. Like, the, yeah. There's, gotcha. There's okay. Some, like, as an Iverson fan, you're going to want to see highlights of him playing in high school, playing football, playing at Georgetown. You know, early Iverson. There's no barbers in some of these expansion towns. Ooh. I'm, I'm going to get some braids, Iverson, to You know what I'm saying? Wow. Like, Yeah. He was a haircut dude. You know what I'm saying? And then it was just like, you I got to watch it. And I'm going to yeah. be honest with you. It wasn't that I didn't watch it initially because he didn't win a championship. I had mm-hmm. to have a conversation with myself. And I'm like, Justin, I, I, this is some real deep diving shit. I was yeah. like, why am I not clicking on this? Mm-hmm. I, like, I have it saved. Yeah, you know, and I, but I'm like, why am I not clicking on this? And I was like, I think in my heart of hearts, it's because he never won a championship, and that's fucked that's up. That's wild. Yeah. yeah, that's wild, especially for a doc. The yeah. championship docs get boring after a while because, like, and then we won again, you know. But like, like the like the doc gets compelling when people lose and they gotta take that long walk back to the locker room. You know, and like pack up and go. Yeah. But what's the greatest? What's the greatest? What's the greatest sports doc of all time, though? Pending The Last Dance. Exactly. Last Dance is great. Exactly. Michael Jordan. And, but The Last Dance is great because Michael Jordan didn't avoid his losses. Yeah. But he still If he did it in a way, if he did it in a like intro to Space Jam way where it's just like, you know, hey, I I jumped in the front yard, and now <laughs> I'm I'm Mr. Aust- awesome, and I'm I'm retiring. You know, like yeah, yeah, man, I'm gonna watch it. 
I'm gonna watch it. You I mean, Iverson, I love you Iverson, bro. If I you love, love Iverson. Iverson, you should watch it. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah. I it doesn't. It. It, it, he hasn't came out and been like, I hated that documentary that Showtime did. Like right. he would have told us if he didn't like it. You I know? do feel like he needs to upgrade his uh, wardrobe. Nah, nah. The way that Clyde Frazier is forever in the '70s. Mm-hmm. That's how Iverson's got to be. Because y'all changed the dress code in his prime <laughs> dressing years. Mm-hmm. The years where he could have got off baggy clothes, y'all made him dress like Jay-Z. And because y'all did that, you were going to see him in a fur coat forever. Yeah. That's him what and, y'all get. Him and Eminem. You know, <laughs> they got to cut the shit. Uh, uh, I was so disappointed when Eminem finally took off the do-rag and there was not a wave in sight. He had that do rag on for years straight. He talked to Sway with the do rag on. I was like, "You're not even gonna take it off for Sway." That thing was wrapped up tight for years. B Rabbit, he had on a hat. Like he was like, "I'm." And, I'm and he walked around. Ways. He walked around with Murray's hair grease also, which was very, very compelling. Yo, Shady. That's when I fell off on the Shady train. When he finally took the do rag off. And then there was no waves. I was like, nah, dog. What what have we been protecting? Blonde? Yeah. I can't sign up for that. Man. What you think about Eminem? I think Eminem uh has everything of an all time great. There's only one thing that's missing. Pigment? No. Well, no. <laughs> There's one thing that's missing from from Eminem, and that's what, and I think that is like he made his singles jokes that were timely, that were topical, and so they don't they don't last. Mm. And some of that real estate could have been to making some jams that we could still play. And so I think there's a section of people who associate hip hop music with jamming and he completely separated himself from making jams. Mm. And that was possible. That's a good observation. He was uh, he was on that track like I feel like it you know if if Dr. Dre and Eminem would have came up with something and it was like this is for the club Em you know it could have happened but he was making smack that yeah, that's a good observation. I I literally just looked up the top selling hip hop albums of all time, like literally yesterday. Mm-hmm. Like he's he's like I don't know top ten like four albums or something. Who is number one? I want to say it was Outkast. Okay. It might it might be Eminem though. I want to okay. I want to look it up. It was either. Oh, like, we don't do that here. Oh, oh, okay. There's one okay. rule on this oh, podcast. Okay. We don't look up shit. My yeah. bad. Okay. Okay. This yeah. podcast has one rule, and the only rule is you cannot look anything up. Oh, That's it. okay. That's it. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. Like, first couple episodes, we had people guess the rule for a while. <laughs> and it would kind of mess with their mind a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I'd get my ass beat. The, part, no, the patrol no, no. officer came I out. Mean, he was like, hey. There's no <laughs> real way of enforcing it, you know? Like, like if you it. if you want, you know, it's not going to come to blows or anything. Like, hey, if you if you want to look it up, no, no, no. You no. can. I, I thought I'm maybe you're, I thought you know maybe your listeners you're breaking the rules. I'm, I'm sorry. just letting you know you're crossing the line. It was either now if you want to dig up under that line and go look it up, that's up to you. But that's okay. But I want to say it was either Outcast, like Speaker Box Love Below, or it was an Eminem. Who else was up there though? Fuji's album was up there. As a, as a guy that says you don't remember the loser, you only remember the winner. I'm really disappointed. That we don't have a clear number one. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's true. Oh, you want to know why I think? Because I looked at two different lists, and I think they had two different number ones or something. Oh, you compared and contrasted lists yeah. to see what they like, what they measured. Because in streaming, now anyone can interpret a certain period as anything. Like, every couple of days, it would be like, Jay-Z, blah, 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 certified platinum. And I'm like... Are those like people bought it or like people buying it over time and it was like close to the edge? Right. Or is that like a certain amount of streams means a certain thing and Jay Z had a birthday playlist recently (laughs) or like something, you know, and then like, you know, he's in the news, something pops up 
and then people, you know, praise him on a podcast, whatever, something spikes his music, and then they're calling that, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. But shout out to Eminem, man. He, he in my top five. He in my top five, though. I know he's not in a lot of people's top five anymore, but he in my top five. He did too much. No, that's not. That's not. I like the way that was coming on, though. Yeah, I don't. My bad. Who in your top five? My top five? Woo! Like, like this Eminem? That's that's this that's Eminem? M- that's Eminem. That's Eminem right there. I think some people didn't embrace Eminem because he was a problem. Fuck these niggas. And he would have he would have went he would have went crazy. You know. Let me tell you when I knew Eminem was a problem. Mm-hmm. Um, Blueprint album. Okay. Him and Jay Z. Renegade. Renegade. He got Renegade. Renegade. <laughs> Who is that? Who is the person saying oh, renegade? Renegade. Oh, renegade. <laughs> like, you think, like, oh, this is the toughest rap song ever. Jay Z, Eminem, 2001. And there's someone that was in the booth and was like, what if I say renegade <laughs> like David Bowie? Like, what oh. if David Bowie said renegade? Ooh. Ooh. Bruh, this is the ultimate, this beat. If you got like big headphones and a fitted head on backwards, fucker, say that I'm foolish. I this only is talk the beat about for Jews, you. Do fools music, skim through it. Wow. Woo. Do you listen to music or do you just skim through it? Woo, I'm gonna be honest, Hove. Sometimes I skim. Mm. I don't have a lot of time. What you skimming to? Uh, albums or singles when you listening to the song? Stuff that I'm revisiting. Okay. The first listen, I'll give you a first listen, of course. I do Blueprint. two I do two songs. By the first time one. I got here, I was like catching my breath. I was like, this is amazing. This is like way late in the album. And it's like, ooh, and now Eminem coming. Ooh. Ooh. Woo. I love that. I don't get you ruined. Mm. He's talking to like the government or somebody. This yeah. is not uh, once again not talking to me. <laughs> not talking to me. I can enjoy that. I didn't ruin the ghetto. I didn't do that. No, you did not. I did not. I'm in eighth grade. That's I right. didn't. I didn't ruin the ghetto. I'm. I'm just trying to get an algebra one. I think I was like a me. sophomore. I think I was a sophomore in high school. Okay. And I remember like driving to homecoming, listening to yeah. the Blueprint album. Did anybody want cigars because of this album cover? Were you guys like, oh, man, we, I can't wait to get a cigar? You know what? <laughs> I don't know, but you want you want to know something I hate? <laughs> you want to know something I hate? I what? hate seeing chicks smoking cigars. Really? I hate. That what, sounds what, sexist. Uh, fuck them. Fuck um, I, <laughs> I got a podcast called Fuck Your Feelings, and I mean it. Okay. So, I, bruh, I don't like. See you on this V a long time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't like uh-huh. seeing like the little sexy photos, but they're like holding the cigars. Cause it's always a hood chick. It ain't never like no Instagram model. Yeah. And you and you can't look this up to prove it either. Well, Please I don't know. want I don't know if like I feel like that you have to be a certain size lungs wise to like appreciate a cigar. And if I feel like the cigar is like a significant amount of like what your lung would be or like your windpipe i would think like this this looks crazy to me you know what i'm saying so i feel like you you're like i'm thinking your lung capacity has to be a certain mass for you to look right with a cigar i'm assuming if you got big lung capacity as a woman Uh uh-huh you also have a big vagina okay Okay, you gotta you gotta be able to breathe in and breathe out. That makes sense. So that's what I'm that thinking. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Scientifically, <laughs> that's all I'm yeah, about. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the scientific facts. I'm here with you. Yeah, you get what that, I'm saying? that's how that's how God made it. So okay, but you don't like this. So you don't you don't want a big vagina. Is that what you're saying? No, I. You know, I had well, <laughs> I had well pussy once. Okay, well. well yeah, yeah. I yeah. had well vagina once. Okay. And, um, it was it was too much. Uh, Justin's podcast we, available all over the place. You guys can find. I was a previous guest. A great podcast. Hey man, that was a great episode, man. A fun time. Hey, a fun man. time. Yeah, man. Shout out to Rob, man. Hey. 
anyways, we don't have to continue on that subject. No, but, no, uh, no. But yeah. So, so when? How old were you when you came to LA? Twenty two. I was twenty two. Because I think technically I was twenty one, but literally I think my birthday was like three days later. Are you born on leap year or something? Why don't you know when your birthday is? Oh, well, I don't know when I got here. Okay, yeah. you don't know when you got nah, here. No, I don't know the exact date. Because I want to say it might have been like a week or so before my birthday. I got you. So I just tell people 22, but I think, I think technically I was 21, and then like a week went by, and it was my birthday. And I then, I was, then I was 22. So I just tell people 22 is so when I got out here. So when you got here, you didn't tell people your birthday was coming up. Nah. Because you just got here. Nah. And you waited till like the end of the day to be like, hey, guys, actually, <laughs> today's my birthday. Well, I needed friends to do that. <laughs> No, but I, you know I don't. Sell you got it. on the bus and you're like, "Hey guys, actually <laughs> today's my birthday." They're like, "Sit down, <laughs> sit down." <laughs> can, can, can I can I steer the bus? This is my <laughs> this is my birthday. Can I? <laughs> you know, <laughs> get your ass to the back. Right, but uh, it's my birthday. I'm turning 22. <laughs> yeah, man, it was 07. Got out, okay, got out here 07. I was bro. gonna ask the year. Yeah, you I, know, I was I was gonna. Ask the error in some other kind of way, but yeah, I would, I would never, I would never make you date. You know, you some know, people are worried about telling their age. I used to though, because yeah. I used to think it, it was. I think if you kind of not established or have yeah. some sort of like footprint in the business, it might be a little harmful to you. I don't know, but like think about this. Even when I did, when I did. 21 Jump Street, mm -hmm. I was playing a 16, 17-year-old. Okay. And I don't think, they they probably, I think at the time, maybe asked me, like, are you over the age of 18? Yeah. Now they be wanting you, do they ask you your age? No, they don't it's ask illegal. you illegal. Yeah, it's they against the law. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, we can edit this out. No, 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 I ain't tripping. So, 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 <laughs> so, so that's my point. Like, because I always look young, it, uh -huh. it played to my benefit. Yeah. So even MacGyver, I was 30. Yeah. When we started filming that. But I'm playing a 25 year old. Yeah. So that kind of be why people don't always be wanting to say their age because they don't want the casting directors. Mm -hmm. They'd be like, oh, well, he he's actually, you know, 30 years old, but we need a 25 year old. Instead yeah. of just being like, is his energy 25? You know, mm -hmm. do he look 25? Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't give a shit now. I'm like, man, whatever, man. I'm 37. Mood I 07. I'm always looking up people's ages when I'm like watching TV. Yeah. But like like of of people from the past, people from like my childhood and stuff. And then I'm like, "Oh, I had a warped idea of like how old I was and how old I was supposed to look at the time and stuff cuz nobody on TV looked how I looked as a teenager." That's right. Cuz I'm not realizing like, "Oh, it's really a money thing." It's like we don't want to pay tutors when we can get like older teenagers who are grown that's exactly, you know it's so funny i was just explaining that to somebody it's not only is it a tutor thing it's a work hours thing mm -hmm. so a kid could only work x amount of hours yeah so if you get somebody that's 18 and over they could work a full day 12 13 hours but yeah. if you got a kid he can only work x amount of hours and then the second component to that is also especially when it comes to comedy a older comedian is more seasoned than a younger comedian so if we yeah. got to be comedically funny, right. we're going to be funnier than whatever 18-year-old because our, sure. our comedic chops are, are up more. So that's the other thing, too. We're more seasoned. Dang. I never thought about it like that. But that does make sense because, mm -hmm. you know, time is money. You can't just be having imposter syndrome and be like, <laughs> do I even belong here? <laughs> you know, can I read? You know, Can I read? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like whoa, whoa. <laughs> green eggs and ham. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah, 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 man. That's what it is, bro. Hey! What made you? What made you go to L.A.? What made you not? You know, go to uh, Atlanta or Chicago or Boston or uh, or uh, New York? Is that is that the like I don't I don't look at number two thing? Well, kind of. I didn't want to go to. <laughs> it's funny you should say that. I didn't go to Boston because I didn't want to be chased. Uh, okay. By uh, <laughs> shout out to Boston. I actually like Boston. Um, I'm I, just naming cities with scenes. I wasn't like wasn't oh, like any stand -up commentary. Scenes. Just stand up scenes. Yeah, At, yeah. I did start in Atlanta though because I went. Okay. To, I, I graduated from Clark Atlanta University. Okay. It, 
There we go. And um, the first two movies I booked, I was still in college. Okay. While attending Clark Atlanta University. Fire. Yeah. So I actually did get my start in Atlanta and got two credits. So when I moved to LA, I already had two movie credits. Shout out to um Will Packer and Rob Hardy. Okay. But yeah, they they put me in their first two like theatrical movies. Dang, yeah. that's fire. Yeah, bro. So I did that. And so when I got out of here, I started doing the YouTube and stand up. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, man. You know, but I picked LA because I just always wanted to move to gotcha. LA. Like since middle school, I knew I wanted to be an actor. I knew I wanted to be a part of show business in Hollywood. And because I had an opportunity to go to, to New York for MTV. Okay. Yeah, because MTV discovered me in college. And they offered me a contract senior year to be a video jockey. That's when video jockey was a thing. What? Yeah. You could have been a VJ? Yeah, I could have been a VJ. Oh, man. Wow. I could have been. I'm not going to say it. But uh, I had nothing. But But I'm going to tell you why I didn't do it. At that time in Hollywood, if you was a video jockey, you was just a video jockey. Yeah. Like, they would put you in a box. Now you could be whatever the hell you want to be. Yeah, yeah, You know, you could have 13 different, you could be a host, an actor, do commercials. But at that time in 06, 07, Mm -hmm. if you was a video jockey, your your destiny was you interviewing people for the rest of your life. And I was like, I don't want to be the one interviewing people. Like, I want people interviewing me also. You know, like, I don't mm. mind doing it, but I don't want to be stuck to this for the rest of my life. Yeah. And so, yeah, man, they offered me a full-time contract. Okay. MTV. They wanted me to be a video jockey for their college network. See, MTV used to have a college network. MTVU. MTVU. Yeah. And so, yeah, so they discovered me doing my radio show at Clark Atlanta University. And okay. They, and they was like, yo, this guy's, this guy's hilarious. So they flew me to like New York to present at the award show. They had something called the Woody Awards on MTVU. Right. They flew me down to Cancun. Yeah. Bro, I was down in Cancun with Nick Cannon doing Spring Break. I don't know if you remember. They did like a Wildin' Out Spring Break Cancun version. Okay. Years, like 06. I'm down yeah. there. I ain't even getting to meet Nick. I'm just watching from the sideline because I'm interviewing early Rick Ross. This is when Rick Ross got. The bass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's when we got early Rick Ross out here, bro. Okay. Uh, um, Akon, I'm interviewing. This is 06, bro. Okay. Yeah, man. I was out Every here, bro. Day I'm hustling, 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 That's what he had out. Florida. Every day I'm hustling. Woo. Every day I'm hustling. Woo. Every day I'm hustling. Hey. Wow. So, yeah, bro. And so, I, and so I told my mom. But I asked him, I said, yo, am I going to have time to do any acting? Because at that point, I wanted to do acting. Okay. And I was like, yo, am I going to have any time to do any acting? And it was like, yeah, I mean, we'll give you like six weeks in the summer. And I was like, yo, I'm not Denzel. Like, I can't just go yeah. to a producer and be like, I got uh six weeks open to yeah. do a movie. And so my mom was like, yo, if you're not going to be happy in New York, and you gonna be happy in L.A. because that's what where you always wanted to be. Follow, it, go with what's gonna make you happy. Wow! Shout out to my mom. That's a leap on the leap. It was because normally people leap and then wherever where they land kind of dictates their next move. Yeah, but you leaped and then you just like I'm gonna just keep leaping. Yeah, bro. And oh, and people. Oh, let me tell you the. Let me tell you what's so fire about this story. I was at my homeboy crib. I ain't, I ain't gonna say. I was at my homeboy Justin Mitchell crib. And okay. When I'm chilling, yeah. Wow. Full name. Yeah. Uh, well, no, because he, he he was supportive. Okay. So he uh, he was out here in L.A. <laughs> <laughs> and so he had some other people. A dude there that was at his house that day. There was Justin Mitchell was like, yo, he just turned down his contract with MTV to move out here. The dude was like, man, you dumb, bro. You dumb, bro. You always take the money. You always take the money. I'm 21, probably. 21 at a time because this was like the first week or two yeah. 21 or 22 I was like I believe in myself I believe it. I'm having a full argument with some nigga I don't know because yeah. he's telling me how stupid I am to turn yeah. down MTV yeah. and I was like I believe in myself you're like bro you always take the money you're never gonna get an opportunity like that again you always take the money I said, I believe it they had to like kind of like break us up like hey yeah. man y'all, y'all yeah. chill out right the first job the second audition I ever did in LA month three I was out here for three months. Mm-hmm. Second audition, I booked a pilot for MTV. Wow! And, and ooh, and I got some. I got some icing. 
Okay. I got some ice into this story. Okay. Did I didn't even know stories had ice. In Ooh, it. I- okay. And, and some strawberries. <laughs> this is a pound cake. Okay. okay. Strawberry shortcake. Mm-hmm. I book rush hour. They do. They do a screening for rush hour in L.A. Mm. Guess who's in the audience? Okay. The same dude the that same told dude. The t- Your plus one was that same dude. Same dude that told me to take the money and I was stupid. You brought the dude or you, he, you ran into the dude? I ran into him. Just okay. so happy he was there. Okay. But he know that was it. That was it. He, he know what it was because he know he was the same person that told me I was dumb mm-hmm. for not taking the money. And now here you are watching me in on a movie screen yeah. for a rush hour of the TV series. That got canceled during the commercial break. Hey, man, we're not going to get into all that. You know what I'm saying? You still had the moment. Had the moment, You had the moment. Nobody checked their phone. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got out of there with the glory. I did, bro. Yeah. Yeah, man. That night, you were number one. That night, I was number one. And who knows who was number two? You done turned down anything yet? You start, you had a, you had a point yet where, where you turning down stuff? Uh, I, like, there was something that I was, like, I feel like I'm doing y'all a solid and, like, I was like, these are the dates that I can do it. I can't do it outside of these dates. I'm not going to, like, move around a a stand-up gig for this. You know what I'm saying? And then they were like, all right, that's cool. So I don't know if that's turning it down or just a mutual, like, all right then, bro. Yeah, but you didn't (laughs) didn't end up doing the gig, right? But I didn't do it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, you got to know your worth, bro. Yeah, yeah. Know what you got going on. I mean, I don't know. I, uh, there there are plenty of things that get presented to me that I'm like, I don't want to have a tough conversation, but I don't know if I want to do that. Right. You know? You got representation though, right? Yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. People try to press you sometimes. Somebody tried to press me for a gig the yeah. other day. Like, I, I need to know 100% if you're going to be able to come. I'm like, bro, I, ain't, I, ain't, I can't even commit to that, bro. I can't commit yeah. to it. I cannot commit to 100%. Yeah. I can't commit you're to asking sh- for a no. Yeah. 100%, now that's a guarantee. That Exactly, bro. Now, now we're getting into, like, you know, nothing in writing from you. Straight up. <laughs> but you want 100%. Yeah. 100%, that has to be written down. And, and, and I'm like, I'm like, who are you? Who you think you talking to? Or to the point to it's like, it's like, even any this is any comedian. It ain't yeah, even yeah. it ain't even a me thing. Yeah, any comedian that's even doing a road gig. Uh huh. It's almost like he was almost. It was almost like I don't know if you like think you, you talking to like an open micer mm-hmm, or something because mm-hmm. it's like. But anyways, I ain't even gonna get into all the detail. But this is the point I was for to make. Even or any road comic. I'm yeah. talking about no credits to got credits. If they book a TV show, their agent or them is going to call the club and be like, unfortunately, if, if the t- if the dates right. conflict, right, right. they're going to have to call the club and be like, yo, unfortunately, Justin, Rob, not going to be able to make it. He got to shoot this show. Yeah. And that, it is what it is. Yeah, yeah. So even those gigs ain't 100%. Right. You see what I'm saying? Right. But you want me to. <laughs> yeah. Confirm for a hundred percent. A hundred percent. After I told you I would do it. <laughs> also, I think there's some people that think, oh, if I want to get in, if I want to really get a response, I got to talk to somebody crazy. Yeah. I got to say something <laughs> wild to them to really like get a response. So then there's people that talk to us wild and it's like, yo, you could be a decent person and still get stuff done. I like working with nice people. I like working with people that tell me all the information. I don't just show up and be like, oh, this gonna should this be recorded with my face on it? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, this this seems wild. It seems like a lot of people don't know what's going on around here, you know? That's a fact, bro. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, you're right. I don't, you know, sometimes sometimes people come at you sideways and it's busy. Yeah. And you got to check people sometimes, you know? sometimes Sometimes I've checked people politely and professionally and sometimes i've had to check people on some hey i'm i'm a i'm a nigga from florida at the end of the day okay all right you know um have you ever played the florida man game no nah. what is it what you got to type in your your, your birthday ad- not the date but just the the month and the year and then florida man oh and then an article will pop up see 
I, I, that's why I messed up. Because okay. I put in my birth date. And yeah, nothing, yeah, yeah. nothing spectacular happened yeah. on my birthday. Florida might not have been as crazy on your specific birth date, but we just had something crazy happen in Florida. Yeah, y'all been having a lot of crazy stuff happen. Y'all, y'all are on a run. Hey man, y'all are on That's a run, we do, man. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying it's a turn up state. They trying to get rid of uh, the black fraternities and sororities. Oh, and, I didn't know that part, man. Yeah, they, like look at some of these bills. It's crazy. Yeah, man, CRT, all kind of stuff, man. They are slowly stripping away people's rights. And mm-hmm. like nobody saying nothing, but it's like no. nobody said anything because it ain't really affect them yet. So I ain't gonna say this joke yet, but but we can't li- we can't live like that where it's like until it affects me, I'm not engaged because I agree. You know, if it if, if they do it to somebody else, that says precedent that they could do it to you. I agree. I agree that a thousand percent. It, you know, legally that says to like, hey, no, we did it. We did it to them. We said they can't read to the children. Now, you know, y'all comedians, y'all can't read to the children. Then it's like, whoa, what you mean? You know? It's like y'all, y'all be cursing. Y'all yeah. be saying wild stuff. Yeah. Y'all be talking about vaginas on, on podcasts and stuff. We heard it. We heard it all. Yeah. All right? Y'all can't read to the children. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a slippery slope they playing. <laughs> like, even when it comes to, like, abortions and stuff like that mm-hmm. i mean it's, it's it's white men typically that's making these laws yeah and even if it's a man making the law it's like you're not a woman so what i'm saying is they haven't personally had a baby growing in them yeah no and had to deal with you know can i afford mm-hmm. to pay for this take care of this baby um how did the baby get there yeah. You know, was it consensual? Was mm-hmm. it not consensual? So I'm like, they personally have not been affected or by by that. And so it's easier for them to just be like, no, nah, fuck that. Y'all ain't doing none of that. And, yeah. You know, here's a bill. So, but hey, man, it is what it is, bro. This is America. I mean, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is America. This is America. You don't cuss in your you stand up. Do you cuss in your stand up? No, not really. I ain't think so, man. That's, yeah. that's good, bro. Shout out to you. I don't feel comfortable cursing in a microphone. Some about it. Some about cussing in a PA system that <laughs> just you know just doesn't seem like like I'm that type of guy. Fuck all that, man. Um, no, I agree with you, man. I'm trying to. I'm not trying to limit my cussing, but I am trying to limit how many times I say the N word. Okay. Yeah. It's a struggle. You know what I think it is? James Davis actually just said this because um, we were talking about Monique special. I think it's how comfortable you are with the material. Yeah. So I think when I'm working on material, mm-hmm. I'm flailing around because I'm searching for what I want to say next. Okay. Once I have it's a filler word. It's a filler word. All right. But then once I know what the material is, then I don't you I don't need to use it or feel like I have to say it. But I do use it. As, so I'm trying to eliminate it from being a, a filler word. It's been such a topic of discussion that I've always felt like I didn't want to like use it in, unless I had something to say about it yep. that hasn't already been said or covered. And it's a well-covered and documented subject matter. So I've just been like, you know, I I can avoid it. You yeah. can go you can go watch me and, you know, you can have an hour out of your life without the N word. I'm going to try that. Yeah. They Assume should. that, like, if something's wrong backstage, they're flying. Is David Blaine? <laughs> it, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If something goes crazy in the hotel room, then, yeah. No, the word is being said. Right. <laughs> you know, the word is being said. But, like, there are 24 hours in a day. And, you know, that 45 to an hour I'm on stage, I might not say it. Well, what I was going to say, I, I don't know if David Blaine is black or not. I feel like he has a little black in him. I'm not. Okay. Sh- I'm not sure, but that sh- that could be a David Blaine like trick. Like, can- you know how he lock himself in a box, yeah, in an ice box for like yeah. three days or something. Yeah. But I would love to see like a black person. Like, there's a clock going, like a hood nigga, yeah. and like he can't say the n word for like 24 hours and just see him struggle mm. and then maybe have like people say it's like a sketch almost but like maybe have people like saying disparaging stuff to him yeah, yeah. and stuff happening to him and he can't say it that's wild yeah 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 some type of death defying if he says it like he i don't know he falls off of a cliff or something i don't know 
So you get it. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. It's, it's something to that. I mean, Woo! And then, like, they play a song or something. Yeah. And you can't even get into it, you know? He can't, he can't even. See what I'm saying? <laughs> he can't even. Yeah. You no. see how hard that would be? Yeah, that's torture. That's that's cruel and unusual punishment. That's torture. You yeah, go, yeah. You, but that's why you go that's work. Hilarious. Oh, thanks, man. Uh, I'm, I'll jot it down. But that's that's why uh, you go work forever, though, bro. Because I mean, it's it's the same. That it's that Jerry Seinfeld, not your comedy type, but I'm just saying, not using profanity and stuff like that. Like I not mean, lean, not leaning on it. I felt like you know, I don't know. I always approached it like I wanted to be a pop artist. Mm. I wanted to be like. You know, something you could play or hear anywhere. You know, like you. You know, somebody's got to be the comic that's on the screen at Walmart. Somebody's got to be. You know, I love that the guy that. So yeah, that's how I always looked at it. Has it worked? Do I feel like I have a a, a pop star budget? Not at all. It's coming. You know what I'm saying? Being a being a a pop star, and then people see you like, man. I, I hope you blow up. I'm like, yo, follow me. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like, repost. Tell people about me. What are you What are you talking about? Hey, man. Hey, dog. You great, man. I hope you blow up. Like, hey, man. Help. Help. I help know. me. Share them clips. <laughs> share them clips. That's why I be trying to share people's stuff, bro. I be, I be trying to do my little part. Hey, man. I appreciate it. Justin, I appreciate you coming on the Inconsistent Podcast with Rob Hayes. Uh, come back anytime. Oh, man. Justin, uh, is there something you would like to tell the people, people to find you, something to promote? Uh, social media, at Justin Hires, uh, like tires. Um, Half-Baked 2, I wrote that. Do a little cameo in it, coming up. Wait. Wait, what? Yeah, you know that? I did know that. Oh. I'm just, <laughs> for effect. Oh, hilarious, <laughs> hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, that was good. You're a great yeah, actor. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I was like, yeah. It was, I believed it. It was very believable. I was like, yeah, yeah I thought you'd do that. Half-Baked 2, yeah. I wrote that for Universal. Um, it got some people from the original in it. Um, okay. Ra- Rachel True, who played Mary Jane. Harley okay. Williams is in it. Okay. Got some cameos, and Jeff Ross is in it. Okay. Um, um, uh, Dexter Darden plays the lead. He plays Chappelle's son. Um, yeah, man. Chappelle's not in it. Okay. All right. But uh, yeah, man. It's, yeah, it's, it's I, coming out you soon. Know, I was gonna pry. Yeah. I was gonna <laughs> ask if you know. Yeah. Yeah, man. Half bay too. So I got that um, coming out. And uh, yeah, fuck your feelings podcast, man. Drop that every Sunday. Every Sunday, man. I love. I love doing that, man. I love. Fun. It, it is. I'm starting to see like. Uh, comedians really embracing it and mm-hmm. people want to pull up and DMing me to be on the show now and uh, I feel good about that man because I was trying to build a community for comedians to come and be able to talk you know fearlessly recklessly and, and it be all in the spirit of uh, comedy and love man so fuck your feelings podcast that's available everywhere uh, Spotify, YouTube, Apple all that yeah man that's really Duh. about it bro Hey, yeah we well, appreciate you coming through appreciate you yeah